Hey, welcome to a Friday here at Designing Adobe XD, uh, the weekly uh, live streaming show. Wow, sorry, I'm just getting right in here this morning. Um, <laughs> Designing Adobe XD, the weekly live streaming show uh, brought to you here uh, by the XD team. And I am Talon Wadsworth. I'm your host. I'm the uh, de lead designer for Adobe XD. And I'm here to talk about all things XD. Um, as, as I normally am at a different time. I think that's what's throwing me off today is uh, usually we do this a little later in the afternoon, uh, but today we're doing something new uh, and we are here this morning. Maybe it's earlier in the evening for some of you. Uh, I know I saw my friend Matthias in there in the chat. High five right back at you, Matthias. Thanks for, uh, for joining right in the middle of dinner time. Usually he's already put the kids to bed and he's just chilling hanging out with us, but how's everybody else doing who, who's hanging out maybe early this morning or maybe it's uh, maybe it's later where you are. Uh, Kita, Vahag, Kusal, Paulina, Michael, how's it going everybody? Are you guys uh, enjoying your Friday? Uh, yeah, what's going on? You guys designing things today? You working? Um, yeah, what's going on? Let me, let me know how it's going. Um, Kita, good question. I don't know, we could probably maybe find somebody or hit somebody up on be on Behance on Twitter. They might be able to help you out. So uh, Claire, how are you? Hi from the UK. How's going in there in, in England today? We're having a very, um, I guess you could say maybe the, the stereotypical sort of British weather. Uh, we're very, very rainy this morning. I'm very feeling I'm still very damp from walking from down through the city. So uh, Excellent, Kusal. Doing some work in XD today. What are you gonna be working on? Maybe today, the topic we're gonna cover today, maybe maybe help you out. I don't know. Um, everyone out there, of course, uh, you know, why uh, adding auto and <laughs> finding a music. Oh, nice, nice, Michael. Love to see it. Hit me up on Twitter, send me that link. Calvin, how's it going? Uh, so today we're gonna be covering a topic that I actually uh, contributed a few thoughts to uh, a, blog, a great blog post that we had up on the Creative Cloud blog the other day about XD, about designing uh, for responsive uh, design. So, you know, the best practices for setting up your designs and using some of the cool features in XD to design better for, for all the different screen sizes that you have to design for. Um, David, how's it going from South Korea? Good to see you. So, do you guys are you guys having running into those problems today? Of course, I think we probably all are for designing for digital experiences. You know, anything for screen design. Uh, you know, we have to design for many different sizes, and a lot of those are out of our control, right? We have, of course, you know, the phones and larger desktops and tablets, and we're sort of trying to sort of make sure our designs look the best th that they they can across all those different sizes. And this is a huge, huge task, huge challenge for us as designers. Um, and in the past, our tools didn't have a lot of capabilities to kind of help us do that. Uh, we all had different sort of ways or different practices that we sort of had sort of built up over time as we learned, you know, how to design in those environments. Some of us decided to sort of, you know, Forget all that manual work. Let's jump right into code. If I'm, you know, I can build up these uh, these designs and make sure and test them and make sure they're more they're flexible right before I before I you know um, go out to production. So again, like there was this time when when uh, you know d tools didn't really help us out, but that's starting to change and it's starting to change in some some kind of key ways in a lot of you know design tools that are they're meant for screens, um, you know, meant for designing interactive experiences. Again. This is just the way UI has to work now. Um, and so we actually had uh, developed a really amazing feature inside of XD called Responsive Resize that really help with that. And not answer, not do everything quite yet, but really be assistive, right? We're not doing any kind of AI or automation, right? Designers still want that sort of bespoke custom control over how their designs and their layouts look across all these different sizes. And we're gonna, we've got some pieces in there that we're gonna cover today. I'm gonna show you some of my tips and best practices for doing that. And uh, of course, you can always go check out that, that blog post as well. Um, there's some great stuff in there from my friend Andy Vitali, uh, and another designer, uh, Jesse Chang from Microsoft. And uh, Oliver did a great job sort of writing that up. So you guys should go, all go check that out on the Creative Cloud blog. Saw some other familiar faces pop up in the, in the chat there. Paulina, how's it going from Mexico? Sydney? From Uganda, wow, good scene, good design scene happening in Uganda here. So, uh, Melanie, how's it going? 
Uh, Munir, Anel, great to see you in there, both of you. Uh, Nidhi, Nidhi, Nidai, Nidai. Mm, I probably just completely killed that, didn't I? Um, so yeah, so uh, today we're just gonna jump in and we're gonna start designing in XD. I know, I'm surprised too, Munir. I got the, like, the, like I actually kind of had the time a little long, wrong. I thought we were starting at 10. So I got the I got the time change and I was like, oh, it's at 9.30. And so I had to rush from uh, from from the train this morning to make sure I got here on time to uh, to get here and design with all of you. So uh, Olivier from um, Marit, Marit, Maritius, Maritius, Maritius. I, I'm, wow, I'm a little slow today. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? How's it going from Detroit, man? How's, uh, how's your morning going there? Um, so this is kind of a, just like some sample designs, um, you know, something that um, kind of all of us run into day to day, right? We have to design for the iPhone and we have to, of course, make sure our app looks great on the iPad as well. Again, with iOS, um, you know, we're going to, when, when the app gets out into the world, right, it, it's gonna be just ready on both, on both devices. So we need to make sure our design has been tested and we have, of course, you know, adapted it, you know, to look the best it can be on both devices. So if we sort of dive in here, again, have you all used responsive resize? Everybody tried out that feature? Is it working? How's it working out for you? How are you solving this today? If uh, I'd love to know how you guys are designing for multiple screen sizes. So one of the so the tool we have in XD today, and it's actually on by default all the time. It's back there, sort of in in the background, kind of working for you and helping you at design time. Um, you know, basically when you select any object or group in particular. Um, you'll see in the panel on the right hand side, the responsive resize section. And this will basically determine kind of how objects, how particularly groups or multiple selections scale on your canvas, right? So when it's on, it's going to behave much more like UI needs to behave as you scale it. And when it's off, it's gonna scale like, like you know, Illustrator used to scale vector app, vector drawings, right? Um, so again, you know, when you have that off, let's just go and look at it. So if I have this component here, um, which is this sort of header, right? I've got my little menu. I maybe I've got some search and I've got an avatar up here. Again, I sort of designed my header for my application. When I have responsive resize off and I scale it, it's going to, oh, I actually have to select all of those. There you go. It's gonna scale everything as I scale it, right? So it's going to grow the type, it's going to um, you know grow the icon, and it's basically going to scale everything. But one of the things that you start to that that's actually not the behavior you want, right? You want this component to stay consistent, to stay on pixel, kind of no matter kind of what screen size you're designing for. So when I have responsive resize on, what that means is as I scale it, everything is sort of staying kind of together and is scaling in the way in which I need it to scale for, for UI design. So I'm gonna go and we're gonna recreate this, this iPad screen here. So I'm gonna make an artboard in XD. I'm gonna make a new, a new iPad. I'm gonna we'll do the larger size, we'll do the 11 inch. All right, and so as I copy and paste these elements over, again, here's the behavior with responsive resize off, right? That's, that's, not, that's not the result that we want. So, but now when I turn responsive resize on and I do that same scaling behavior, you can see it does exactly what I want it to do. It doesn't scale any of the objects that are inside the group. It doesn't, you know, squish or distort the, the, the circle with my, with my avatar in there, right? So it just sort of automatically kind of flows kind of exactly, it does pretty much what I expect it to do, right? I want this UI element to grow. I want that header to stay the same height. I want all those, those elements inside to, to kind of keep their relationship to that to that, that the header bar, right? And it just kind of works. And what's kind of going on behind the scenes here, just to talk a little bit about some of our amazing engineers, is that we actually um, went in and actually looked at the ways in which UI designers work. And we looked at the ways and, and the patterns and tried to identify um, some of the sort of relationships and some of the rule sets by default um, that, that again would define how this component should scale, right? And then we kind of built that into the algorithm. So in auto mode, so again, uh, the responsive resize can be on or off. 
and it can be either in auto mode or in manual mode. In auto mode, basically that that's that's the algorithm. That's the the smart engineers that we have on the XD team, um, and the smart sort of product managers and, and designers who looked at you know thousands of designs and really pulled out the rule set, the sort of default rule set uh, that would help you scale your components correctly most of the time, right? And I think that's kind of maybe what we're gonna get to is talk to a little bit more about the nuance of that. But it's really powerful. I can just take you know, and copy over any of these components and as I scale them out, right, they do exactly what I want. And I haven't had to like do anything else with this, all right? So has everybody fallen along? Has everybody used responsive resize? What do you guys think? Is this something that um, that is useful in your workflows? Again, I find this this feature most useful like as I'm designing from scratch. Um, a lot of the times, again, um, maybe sometimes I, I'm going from more finished design and then I'm trying to translate it. But for when I'm designing anything, I'm already thinking about all the different sizes it's going to be sort of viewed at. So uh, you know, you hear in the industry a lot, you know, mobile first. A lot of designers like to design mobile first, right? Um, and it, it that means that I'm thinking about the smallest size and possibly the biggest size that I'm going to have to my my design is going to be viewed at at all times, and I I start that way automatically, and that's really kind of one of those best practices. And I would even go kind of even 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 broader, and I, I'm I'm thinking about all the limitations uh, that my design might sort of find itself in. And I usually use that actually to help me um, kind of design from scratch rather than sort of retroactively trying to convert one design into another. You know, I'm designing these elements with all those sizes in mind from the get-go. And that's really what responsive resize really helps me with. Um, how's it going? Uh, I see some more names popping up. Tim, how's it going? No leaks today, I think. I'm, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep it pretty chill today. Uh, we've got some really exciting features coming though, uh, pretty soon. I'm very excited about. So, um, hey Dushi, how are you? And it's actually uh, I didn't know from the small avatar because here when in the studio the screen the, the avatars I can't quite make them out all the time. But uh, Roxana actually, uh, Dushi Rocks actually hit me up on Twitter the other day, and it was great to see your work in XD. So Roxana, thanks for thanks for sharing. Um, hey there, Ariana, how are you doing? Um, Calvin, useful for RWD. I'm bad with acronyms. Calvin, what's what's RWD? Yeah, Nell, no streaming today uh, at, at 12. I, I am, we're getting to start early today. We're doing some new, some new contents, uh, new, new, sorry, new content schedule during the month. And you're gonna catch me at some earlier hours uh, every month, every few months or so. Um, so Michael's saying responsive resize is definitely good and useful. It's only good most of the time, depending on the nuances, right, exactly. So this, this sort of automatic behavior, Michael, as you're noting, is is good for that 80% of the time, 85% of the time. Again, it's assistive. It's not gonna do everything. It's gonna, it's, it's not AI. It's not automated for you, right? Like the, I think we're doing a better job of understanding some of those relationships um, in with the auto behaviors. Like up here with, with this one, um, if we sort of drill in now and we sort of look at these, if we go and select some of the, some of the items that are actually inside the group, We'll actually start to see the responsive resize panel actually start to change a little bit. So now when I'm in here, I can actually see the rule set that is being applied to this object as it's being as the the container, the group is being scaled. So this piece of text right here it is uh, is anchored to the left, and it's anchored to the top, which means as I scale this header, that 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 text will stay anchored in position in relationship to the left edge and the top of my group. The basically the blue box. I'm sort of showing that group by having the blue box kind of kind of out there. So again, we sort of look at that. All right, all right. So here, uh, the relationship is this is pinned to the or affixed to the to the left and to the top, which means as we scale this. What should happen is it should stay, again, it stays uh, fixed to the left. And when I scale down, again, it stays affixed to the top. And actually, this is a really bad color because we're actually missing some of the information in here. So let me actually, I'm gonna go change this color so we can get a little bit better sort of view of what's happening here and what's gonna be good for us. 
trying to figure it out. Let's go. They're pink lines, so I want to get a color that's going to work here. Maybe we'll just go gray. Let's just go gray. Okay. So when I'm in here and I've set the left and the top, now when I actually go and actually adjust this, and you, you can see as I'm adjusting and scaling, uh, and this is that's still not great. Let me let me tweak that a little bit more so you guys can see what's going on here. You can see those pink lines. Those pink lines are actually showing you the rules of the scaling behavior, right? And so this is the this is the automatic rule set that that the the XD has applied to this group, right? And so now when I go in and I adjust, I see these. I can go to the panel and I can change those scaling behaviors, like where those things are sort of in going to uh, scale in relation to. So let's just see what happens when I take off pin to the top for these two elements. So we're gonna take that off. And now when we go and we scale this down, you can see they're now staying in the middle. They're still affixed to that left edge, but they're no longer staying pinned or sort of anchored to that top edge, right? So again, the the, the default settings are, are pretty good, but as we were noting, a oh, responsive web design. Thanks, Calvin. I, <laughs> I'm i very, ac acronyms and me, have ne I've never been good at that. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so you can go in here now and we can start to, again, if, if in certain instances, let's say the behaviors the default behaviors, again, we didn't make the right sort of associations. You can go in and tweak that and adjust that to your to your liking. Um, so one of those are with um, with this one in particular. So we showed this one scaled fine by default as I dragged it out left, right? All of these things sort of did exactly what I expected them to do based on the automatic setting. So here, when, though, when I drag down, now I've got, now I've got some, some, this is not right. This is this is not keeping kind of uh, you know everything sort of together as I wanted. So now this is when I can go in there and actually start to use those manual settings on the objects that are inside of this group to actually help me, the designer, tell XD how this component should scale. Right. So what I can do is I can take all of these and I can manually sort of say I can turn on the manual and I can say all right I I want you to stay pinned to the bottom. I want that one to also stay pinned to the bottom. And let's see that one. All right, now let's see what it does. There we go, that's a little more like it, right? So that that is how you can use, again, the, both the automatic settings and the manual settings in responsive resize to, again, help help sort of assist the, the you know, XD in kind of helping you scale this object the way it needs to be scaled. Uh, and there's a couple other things you can do um, with responsive resources, kind of again give it a little more information. So one of those things um, we're going to draw a quick sort of nav, uh, sort of tab bar. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to make a bar and I'm going to put three icons. I'm just a sort of placeholder for some icons here. So as if you know, again, I had maybe a navigation bar, a tab bar at the bottom of my app. I make that into a group. And as it's sort of, it has the responsive resizes on, it's set to auto. As I drag that out, you can see those icons start to kind of grow apart. Again, so the automatic setting means that the, those icons will kind of keep their relative position inside that box. But what if I actually wanted those icons to actually stay together? And I wanted the container, the group, or the tab bar to grow, but I wanted those icons to, to keep, again, the distance between them. One way I can do that is again I can go in, you know, per object, and I can actually, um, you know, basically tweak their responsive resize settings. Or another thing I can rely on is actually grouping. And again, that's that's another thing that the 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 um, the I don't want to say the algorithm because that feels kind of a little too high minded. But XD is looking for information that you're giving it to help it be smarter. Right to help assist you more as you're designing, help do again the 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 right thing, and if it's not the right thing with a small tweak, you can you can get the right behavior. So grouping, if I go in and I now group those icons, now let's go see what happens based on those automatic settings. Oh, there you go. See, without having to drill in and change the manual settings of responsive resize, all I had to do was go in and group those together, and in doing that, I told XD, hey, these things need to stay together, keep their relationships 
together, right? So grouping is your friend along with the settings there and responsive resize. But a lot of the times, you know, again, I, I really find grouping to be probably the most useful way to, to help this, this responsive scaling behavior. Uh, it's smarter, right? Uh, take a second here and say hi to a bunch of new new uh, new faces, new names that popped up in the chat. Huxel, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I'm a little thrown off by the t by the time change. It's a little early for me. I feel like it takes me a little while to kind of get up and going, you know. And so I just got out, just got off the train, just had some coffee. It's starting to click a little bit. <laughs> How's everybody doing? So, uh, yeah, Roxana, you should do. You should definitely go and 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 play with this a little bit. I'm going to show you kind of a, one other cool thing that you can do um, with responsive resize when it comes to using repeat grids. But there's a lot to to do here. And again, what's really cool, uh, and we're still kind of again, kind of making getting this up and running. But but in the long run, we hope responsive resize just gets smarter as all of you smart designers are actually using it. Um, you know, the more you kind of tell it kind of what what behaviors, uh, how you want things to scale, the better we're going to be able to interpret those those patterns and just help to make those automatic settings for response to size better. So more to come on that one, though. It's still this is still pretty new. We've got lots of really exciting things planned for responsive resize. All right. So the one thing last thing I want to show you here today um, is uh, how responsive resize works with with repeat grid. This is actually one of my favorite sort of behaviors. So here in this section, uh, I've got you know, maybe this little little, car little carousel here, and um, here I'm actually showing maybe two two items you know in in here to sort of maybe buy. Um, but of course, as if I had more space, I would I would naturally want to display more. And in here, I actually have my this this element, this 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 little list here of these two items to buy. Um, I actually have it inside a repeat grid. So as I drag this down, right, I can just get you know have more items in in this uh, in this little buying this little item category carousel. So what's cool though is I group that, and then I will paste this onto my larger screen. What's really cool is if I do, if I just start to drag that edge, again, I haven't done any settings on responsive resize. This is automatically how it treats a repeat grid. As I drag out now the container of that little card with those items on it, it just expands that repeat grid. And that is just so cool. Let's see, we'll do it this, the other way. Oh, see here, I actually, we, we gotta go in and tweak this, this setting a little bit. So let's go up here. And I'm just going to group those again because that's the fastest way to really help, you know, again define some of these relationships. And then now, as I drag, oh look at that! That's amazing. So I can go in here. We'll drag a little bit more. I'll go back in, and I want to actually see a little. I only want to see two columns, so I'll do that and drag this back. There we go. Designing our iPad version of our application in minutes. Again, there's a lot of really cool things to do here. I'm going to come back actually next month when a couple other features are released and show you some some really exciting stuff uh, with responsive resize uh, and designing for response, re designing uh, responsibly for responsive web design, as Calvin <laughs> noted, the RWD. Uh, and yeah, there's again a few, some more pieces coming that I think are really gonna 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 do some amazing things when you start combining them together. Again, you've got you got symbols and repeat grid and responsive resize and those new features launching in a month or so. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty exciting. So yeah, so what do you think? How's everybody doing? Um, you guys, this this helpful? Is this useful? Have you been using repeat grid and? Um, Kita, I'm so glad that it's been helpful. Again, I find it the most helpful at design time, at iteration time. Um, and of course, it is helpful. Like if I do have my design, I do need to convert it kind of after the fact. But I just love that again, like the scaling behavior, it, like just works like the way I want it to work as a UI designer, you know, as a UX designer, um, right? It, like these behaviors are just naturally how I want to work, how I want my design to scale. And we've got some more exciting features to sort of build on top of this. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. So so yeah. Um, so yeah, so everybody, uh, you guys have any questions? And we got, a, we got a few more minutes here. I'm just going to keep on kind of playing here as we go. Um, no, Akita, you, I'm, this is, 
again, like I, I happen to sort of again, this is this is kind of like the cooking shows, you know, when you sort of come in and the they put the 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 meal together, then magically out of the oven comes the finished thing, you know. <laughs> There's a little a little little prep time. I kind of had some of this already designed out, but uh, responsive resize definitely makes this this much much easier. Um, if you want to read a little bit more about this, there's a really great blog post um, on the Creative Cloud blog on the XD section about responsive resize. And actually, uh, I, I got to contribute a little bit to that, as well as some other very talented designers. Um, so you should go, should go check it out. And actually, you, this is the same file I used to create some of those um, some of those sort of graphics that are included in there. Um, of course, and you can always come back and watch the stream here too. So. Um, good, Ariana. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you uh, got some good tips. Um, Huxel, you should always share your work. That's the best thing, man. You should always be sharing your work and getting feedback, and that's that's how you get better. That's how you grow. Um, but make sure you do it with with people that uh, again you're you're open to their feedback. Um, it's always tricky on the internet, but I I will always give hopefully a, a really hopefully useful feedback. But I always love seeing your work. So if you ever want me to check something out, um, hit me up on Twitter. Maybe we'll do a portfolio review on the stream again soon. So uh, let's see. Um, so yes, Claire, it will work that way as well. Um, so if I did start with the larger format and I scaled it back down, let's actually just go and do that now. There you go. It works in reverse. And I think it would even be cool if it worked on objects around other objects. Which, if you say, if I drug this one out like this, and then just like floats behind that other one. But I want that other one to just just move down. Hmm. I have to work on that. <laughs> um, let's see. Anthony has. Are we getting a classic menu? Um, Good question, Anthony. Um, we are evaluating that right now. Um, yeah, we're gonna we we're, we want to make some changes on Windows. Um, so, but that's gonna might be a little further out. But stay tuned on that one. Um, so, Lena, I think that if if I if I would sort of get to the meaning behind mobile first, and Lena had a question: Do you think designing for mobile first is easier? The best way to work on responsive design. So the way I like to think about it is you need to evaluate your constraints. You know, as a designer, I actually really like constraints. I think that it actually guides me to a better design. Um, I remember reading this interview with Jack White a long time ago, The White Stripes. And he, you know, the reason that the band uh, only dressed in you know, red, white, and black was so they didn't have to think about anything else. They could they could focus on the music, right? So they knew exactly every night when they came out what they were going to wear, so they didn't have to think about what they were going to wear on stage. And when they came out, they could just focus on the music. And that's that's kind of how I think about responsive design, is I, I like, all right, I'm designing for, you know, mobile, uh, 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 you know, tablet and desktop. And I already know going in that my design has to work across those three those three surfaces, right? So I'm not thinking about them, you know, later on when I when I've sort of perfected my design, you know, to pixel perfect on web, and then I almost have to like break it apart and redesign it completely for mobile. So the minute I start designing anymore, I design for all the sizes at once. So I'll take and I'll design, uh, you know, for the header here, and I'll take it over to this size. And I'll you know start seeing it, start evaluating it almost immediately. I, I I am thinking about how my design is going to look across each of those. I'm designing in real time that way. So that's really what mobile first is about: is thinking about those constraints and thinking how to creatively solve those problems, rather than you know waiting until you know you've got this pixel perfect design and then you have to go break it apart. You know, it just saves time, right? And I think you end up with better solutions as well that work across all those screens. Um, yeah. So thank you all. For for joining me, this was an early one. Uh, we're gonna do this every every uh, every few weeks or so. Um, there's some really amazing new content coming to you from Adobe Live, uh, and thank you all for joining me. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Talon. I'm always happy to check out the great work you're doing uh, or answer any of your questions. So thanks, and we will see you next week. Got something exciting planned for next week too. So definitely want to tune in. <laughs>